YouTube as this is Jacques Gaines from Jacques Gaines Photography. I'm in my car because I got too much stuff to do today. But what I want to talk to you about today is horror stories, mine and how they went. And I want to hear about yours. Stay tuned. Hey YouTube as listen, I gotta drive so I might not look right into the lens, but here's the deal guys. Um, I have two horse horror stories to talk about and everyone's got them. Everyone's got them. When you actually are a pro and you start working for money, you always start working for money at a level that's a bit amateur. That's what I think. You learn from the best, you do the best you can, but sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to. And my first example is a photo shoot I did. It was a fashion photo shoot. Now, before I get to the fashion photo shoot, I gotta tell you what happened initially. I was, the day before this fashion shoot, I was doing a time lapse. And at that time, I had the Canon EOS 6D. The Canon EOS 6D, which is a great camera, but it did not have in-camera time-lapse, so I had to buy an intervalometer, uh, which is basically an external trigger that actually does the intervals for the camera and shoots. Now, when you do that, it is in your best interest to put the resolution of the photos at 1920 by 1080, which I did. I put my photos at 1920 by 1080. It allows you to do your time-lapse way longer, and uh, you don't eat up resolution, and the resolution is true because it's pixel for pixel. Therefore, I did that, and that day the time lapse went super well. Everything was great. Go ahead, Alizy, Monsieur. Alizy, no. Wait, wait, was he? So that day the time lapse went exceptionally well. I, I rendered it. I used to render in After Effects. At that time, I'd make an image sequence, and it was quite cool. It used to do the trick really, really well. Now the next day, here's where the kicker came. I forgot to put my camera back in high resolution to take stills. I was still in 1920 by 1080 to take the stills. So 1920 by 1080, I believe in Canon, is uh, the S1 setting. S1 JPEG, no RAW. So I do this full photo shoot in the morning. I think, no, it was in the afternoon. It was from, from about, uh, 11 with the makeup and everything all the way to about 3 30 4 o'clock I get home I've shot I've shot and I've shot some killer shots I mean this is with Celeste and I don't know if you've seen her but she I am a big fan of her look we got her with this really glamorous sexy makeup and it was really cool I get home and oh my god everything is in s1 all my shots are in JPEG 1920 by 1080. I hit myself in the head about 20 times and after about a good 40 minutes of almost crying, and I mean literally almost crying, my shots were beautiful, but they were all in like low resolution. I call back Celeste, I say, Celeste, do you still have your makeup on? She says, yes. I said, I was in low res. Can I come back and reshoot you? We did a double take that day. We actually did the whole shoot twice. Can you believe it? Even though I had those things in 1920 by 1080, a lot of those shots I still use today, even the low res. But first of all, that was a cool thing because Celeste was a trooper and uh, you know, it went okay in the end, but I was very lucky to have to be surrounded by a cool model. I worked with a cool model that day, so it went pretty well. But on any other day, it would have been a disaster. It still was a disaster. Next fail. Here we go. Now, this is less of an actual SD card fail and more of a hard drive fail. I have never, knock on wood, had an SD card fail on me. Now, never say never. I know that, everybody. Trust me. The most nervous part of my life is when I have finished a shoot and I come in to dump. I am very nervous when that happens. Because it's the only time where you cannot back up while you're doing something. 
because if I could, I would literally back up my stuff while I was doing it. Anyway, second story, here we go. I am working at the circus school at this time about part-time and at the same time I have clients. So because of that reason, I went out and bought an external hard drive to be able to work on projects at home and then bring them into the office and work when I was working at the circus school. I'm sure you guys see what's coming. But anyways, so I buy this external hard drive and I look and I see, oh wow, two terabytes, that's cool. And at that time, listen, it was two terabytes about two. No, I got three terabytes on that, but it was just, I bought a cheap hard drive. I bought a cheap hard drive, why? Because it was a good, 150 to 200 dollars cheaper than like a G drive or something like that. So I go out and buy this cheap hard drive, and I still am a guy who backs up a lot. So I had already backed up, I was backing up all my stuff. But you go through these busy periods, especially at the circus school and with clients around fall and the Christmas area, it gets pretty darn busy. Because of that reason, I hadn't backed up for roughly 60 to about 90 days. I put all my hard drive and stuff on the computer at the office. I go downstairs to do a presentation. When I come back upstairs, I go into my office and I listen and all I hear is thum, 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 thum. I go, what's that? And I know my computer is enough to know, sounds like a hard drive failure. And there's a couple of hard drives in that office, but I say, no, 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 this can't be my actual hard drive with all my video and photo stuff on it. Guess what? It was that hard drive. That hard drive broke on me. It was unrecuperable. I sent it to everywhere. I sent it to California. They could not get the stuff off it. It just busted and there was nothing to do. So I lost roughly 60 to 90 days of video and photo footage. So those are my two horror stories. Now, what did I learn from that? Well, I back up so much, people think I'm neurotic. I back up every, first of all, I come into the house, I'm extremely nervous. When I get into the house, I am a nervous man. I dump immediately. I don't even talk to my wife. I don't talk to anybody, my daughter. I, I tell them all, listen, I'm dumping, I'm dumping. Let me go dump. I go right upstairs and I start dumping everything onto the hard drive. When I'm done doing that, I do not erase the SD cards or any memory cards that I just recorded on. I keep them until I shoot in the next thing. Now as soon as I dump, my computer is programmed with Crash Plan Pro for small business to upload all this stuff onto the web and put it into the cloud. So it's backing up, it's versioning, I think 180 versions of everything I do. And I back up at the same time on a NAS at home locally. I'll leave a link to Crash Plan Pro for business and I'll also leave a link for uh, the NAS that I use. Now, I wanna mention that because it only costs me about 140 a year for that cloud storage. Now, if you think of how much it costs for any hard drive, it, you know, one, two terabytes just to have hard drives in the house backing up all your stuff, it's roughly that if not even more. Now to Crash Plan Pro for business, for small businesses, I back up roughly two to three terabytes a year. And uh, I am very anal retentive. I erase photos when they're no, when I don't need them anymore. When projects are done, I optimize them and I archive them. I am a clean person when I do my stuff. I really am clean when it comes to dealing with my data. So that's the lesson I learned. It was to back up, back up again, and back up your backup. And that's being done constantly. At home, constantly. While I work, even when I work on a premiere project, even the YouTube stuff I do right here, it's being backed up immediately. Now I wanna know two things, your horror stories and how you dealt with it. Do you back up today or do you just a guy that, or a girl that lives on the fly and doesn't care and just goes and says, what the hell, I'm just gonna do things the way I do them. 
Leave your comments below. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Follow, like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, everybody, keep on making something from nothing.